I just finished doing an investigation of the death of an American president. He died in 1850, Zachary Taylor. I wrote an article called History as Mystery, uh, The Strange Death of President Zachary Taylor. In 1991, his tomb was opened and they investigated it because some historians, was, one historian was suspicious that he had actually been poisoned. And they came out with the report that he wasn't poisoned, he died of natural causes. Well, I got the reports and started looking at them more closely and found all sorts of funny things. That the arsenic level in him was 15 times higher than the normal level in a person walking around. That the antimony level in him, uh, antimony level in him was, was vastly higher, was uh, 50, 60 times higher. Antimony is a, is a poison, uses a poison, even a higher toxicity than arsenic uh, and a bunch of other things. And so I wrote this whole article. And one of the quotes I came across was by a historian, Eugene Genovese. He was asked by the press, would any political protagonist in the United States of 1850 be capable of such a deed? Taylor, you see, was opposing the slave power. He refused to have any extension of slavery. He was holding a hard line against any extension of slavery into the Western territories. And there was a lot of hard feeling against him about this. And when he died, Millard Fillmore came in and the policy immediately shifted. Total change in policy. The Compromise of 1850 came in. The slave powers got all they want. Fugitive slave laws were strengthened, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I won't go into any more particulars. But that's what it was about. There was a real political interest involved. And Genovese says, I can't imagine any Southern personalities who would have been involved in such a conspiracy. You know, it's an interesting thing when you make these kind of statements because it's a reflection of you. It's a reflection of, of how moderate and decent you are when you say, I can't imagine this kind of crazy thing happening. If you can imagine this kind of crazy thing happening, this sort of begins to raise some question about your credibility, you see. <laughs> he says, I can't imagine there's going to be anybody involved in such a conspiracy. He goes on, he says, but there's always the possibility that there were some nuts who had access to him and did it. Well, I want to say that history shows us that nuts are not the only ones capable of evil deeds. That gentlemen of principle and power of genteel manner can arrive at very grim decisions. If they commit crimes, it's not because they harbor murky and perverse impulses, but because they feel compelled to deal with the dangers that oppose to their way of life. This doesn't mean that they're motivated by, by, by purely financial reasons, although that's a very real consideration, I think. But they equate their vital interests with the well-being of their society and their nation. In this case, with the well-being of the cause of Southern rights. And far from being immoral or unscrupulous, they are individuals of principles that are so lofty as to elevate them above the restraints of ordinary morality. They don't, they don't act on sudden impulse. The feeling grows among them that something must be done, something that's best for all, that the situation is becoming intolerable. They move gradually toward the position. The change is gradual, and yet it's so compelling that when they arrive at their decision, they're no longer shocked by the extreme measures they're willing to employ. The execution of the unsavory deed is made all the easier by delegating its commission to uh, lower level operatives. Most of the evil, most of the evil in history is perpetrated not by lunatics or monsters or lone psychotics, but by persons of responsibility and commitment whose most unsettling aspect is the apparent normality of their deportment. It's like child molesters we're finding, we're saying there's danger in the stranger. It's not the stranger we find out are the child molesters and the abusers. It's not some guy who goes around like this with drool coming down like this. It's the, uh, in many cases, upright, estimable gentlemen of the community who no one could believe would do such a thing. I want to point out that the social order itself is not without intent. That you can think of a social order operating with immense impersonality and yet it too has intent. <clears throat> 